So in this lesson, we are going to solve mathematical induction problems. Now, mathematical induction is a technique which is used to prove variety of mathematical statements in terms of n, where n is a natural number or a positive integer. Now, in order to prove by induction that a mathematical statement is either true or false, there are three main steps we need to familiarize ourselves with. First of all, given that p of n is a mathematical statement involving the natural number n, for step one, we are going to prove that the statement is true for the first term, that is for n equals one, and we call that the base step. For step two, we are going to assume that the statement is true for n equals k, where k is any arbitrary natural number. And then for step three, based on the assumption made in step two, we are going to prove that the statement is true for the next term, that is for n equals k plus one. So for step one, we are going to prove that the statement is true for the first term, that is for n equals one. And then for step two, we assume that the statement is true for n equals k, where k is any arbitrary natural number. And then for step three, based on the assumption made in step two, we are going to prove that the statement is true for the next term, that is for n equals k plus one. And then we can conclude that the statement p of n is true for all natural numbers. Now you should understand that the set of natural numbers is equal to the set of positive integers. You know natural numbers are counting numbers and hence they start from 1, 2, 3 and so on and so forth through to positive infinity. So at a point if you don't hear natural numbers but instead positive integers, you should know that we are talking about one and the same thing. Now let's move on from here as we solve a couple of examples. So for example one, we are going to prove by induction that one plus three plus five plus dot 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 plus two n minus one is equal to n square for all n be a member of the set n. So how do we solve this problem? Let's try this together. So we have the mathematical statement that is p of n. So we have one plus three plus five plus dot 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 plus two n minus one and that is equal to n square so as we said earlier the first step the first step is to prove that the statement is true for the first term that is for n equals one so for n equals one we have p of one now this mathematical statement describes the sum of positive integers or the sum of natural numbers and you can see very clearly from the left hand side. So you have 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus so on and so forth. So this is actually the first term. So the first term is 1. So on the left hand side we have 1 and that is equal to on the right hand side we have n square. Now since we have for n equals 1 in place of n we are going to have 1 so on the right hand side we have 1 square so we have 1 equals 1 and then you realize that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side now since the left hand side is equal to the right hand side it follows that the statement is true for n equals 1 so since the left hand side is equal to the right hand side it follows that p of 1 is true p of 1 is true now let's move on to step 2 now even before we move on to step 2 let's try to do something here so we are able to prove that for n equals 1 the statement is true now let's verify for n equals 2. So for n equals 2, this means that we are going to consider the sum of the first two terms. Okay, the sum of the first two terms. So that is 1 plus 3. So on the left hand side we have 1 plus 3. And that is equal to, on the right hand side, in place of n, we have 2. So that is 2 square. 
so we have 1 plus 3 to be 4 and then 2 square also to be 4 so the left hand side is equal to the right hand side now let's also verify for the sum of the first three things so we have 1 plus 3 plus 5 1 plus 3 plus 5 and that is equal to in place of n we have 3 so 3 square 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 5 is 9 and that is equal to 3 square which is also 9 so you realize that for the sum of the first two terms the left hand side is equal to the right hand side for the sum of the first three terms the left hand side is also equal to the right hand side now what this primarily means is that now even though the statement seems to be true for n equals 1 n equals 2 n equals 3 how can we verify for n equals 10 n equals 20 n equals 30 and so on and so forth now as n becomes large the whole solution process becomes a little bit complex so at this point we are going to choose an arbitrary natural number that's n is equal to k and assume that the statement is true for n equals k so that is what we are going to do for step two so for step two we are going to assume that the statement is true for n equals k so we have p of k and then in place of n we are going to plug in k so writing this whole statement we have 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dot 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 plus 2k so in place of n we have k minus 1 and that is equal to k square so this is an assumption we are making now we move on to step 3 so based on the assumption made in step 2 we are going to prove that the statement is true for the next term which is for n equals k plus 1 so for p of k plus 1 So we are going to write this statement so that is 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dot 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 plus 2k minus 1 and then we are going to add the next thing so that is plus still writing this wherever we see k we are going to substitute k plus 1 so we have 2 times k plus 1 minus 1 and that is equal to the right hand side we are going to substitute k plus 1 for k so we have k plus 1 all square now at this point let's try to simplify so back to step 2 we have 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dot 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 plus 2k minus 1 to be equal to k square now you realize that that is exactly what we have for from this point through to this point it's exactly what we have here so you are going to substitute k square in place of this whole thing so thus we have k square plus let's simplify this so we have 2k plus 2 minus 1 that's equals k plus 1 all square is k plus 1 times k plus 1 so we are going to have k square plus 2k plus 2 minus 1 is 1 and that is equal to we multiply k by k we have k square plus 1 times k we have k plus k times 1 we still have k so k plus k is 2k so 2k plus 1 times 1 is 1 now at this point you realize that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side now what this primarily means is that the statement is true for n equals k plus 1 so p of k plus 1 is true p of k plus 1 is true hence the original statement p of n is true for all natural numbers p of n is true for all 
natural numbers. Now let's move on as we solve the second example. Also for example 2, we are going to prove by induction that the mathematical statement 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 plus n equals n times n plus 1 divided by 2 for all n where n is a member of the set n. So let's solve this as well. So we have the mathematical statement p of n which is 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 plus n equals n into brackets n plus 1 divided by 2. So the first thing we need to do as usual is to prove that the statement is true for n equals 1 which is the base step. So for n equals 1 we have p of 1 and that's that's actually the first thing. So on the left hand side we have 1 and that is equal to on the right hand side we substitute 1 in place of n. So that is 1 times into brackets we have 1 plus 1 divided by 2. So that is equal to on the right hand side we have 1 plus 1 which is 2. So we have 1 times 2 divided by 2. 2 goes here once, 2 goes here once. 1 times 1 divided by 1 is still 1. So, since the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, it follows that the statement is true for n equals 1. So, p of 1 is true. Now, let's move on to step 2. That is where we are going to assume that the statement is true for n equals k, where k is an arbitrary natural number. So, for p of k, we are going to plug k in place of n. Writing this statement, we have 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 plus k. So in place of n, we have k equals also for the right hand side, k into brackets, k plus 1 divided by 2. So this is an assumption that we are making. Now for step 3, based on the assumption in step 2, we are going to prove that the statement is true for n equals k plus 1. So for p of k plus 1, we are going to write this statement back, the left hand side, that is 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 plus k. And then we are going to add the next term. So writing this in place of k, we have k plus 1. So plus k plus 1. And that is equal to on the right hand side. Wherever we see k, we are going to substitute that for k plus 1. So we have k plus 1 on the outside times k plus 1 and then plus 1. Or divided by 2. Now let's work this out. So from step 2, we have 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 plus k equals k into brackets k plus 1 over 2. And that is exactly what we have from this point through to this point. So we are going to substitute k times k plus 1 over 2 in place of this whole thing. So we are going to have k into brackets k plus 1 over 2 plus k plus 1 and that is equal to k plus 1 and then here we have k 1 plus 1 is 2 so k plus 2 all over 2 so we can consider this to be divided by 1 and then we try to find the LCM so the LCM between 2 and 1 is 2. So we have LCM to be 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times k into brackets k plus 1 is still k into brackets k plus 1. So we have k into brackets k plus 1 plus 2 divided by 1 is 2. So we have 2 times k 
plus 1 and that is equal to the right hand side which is k plus 1 times k plus 2 all over 2 now on the left hand side we have k plus 1 k plus 1 as the common term so we can factor that out which is k plus 1 and then inside of the bracket we have k plus 2 so k plus 2 all over 2 equals k plus 1 k plus 2 all over 2 now you realize that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side so since the left hand side is equal to since the left hand side is equal to the right hand side it follows that the statement is true for n equals k plus 1 the statement is true for n equals k plus 1 hence the original statement p of n is true for all natural numbers so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye bye